Right, this is something I commonly hear all the time. Someone has an injury and pain and they don't know what's going on and they think, shall I get a scan? Is a scan gonna solve the problem? Well, the first issue is that there's the, the issue of people thinking that a scan is 100% accurate, that it's just gonna show them the solution and the problem they've got. The thing is, is that it isn't 100% and there's some research showing how accurate a scan can be here. And another thing is, is that even if it told you what was wrong, it doesn't give you the solutions for what is wrong. So you can have two people with the same condition, but with completely different reasons why they've got that condition. Therefore, the solutions are gonna be completely different. The scan tells you nothing about this sort of stuff. So yes, you could say it's interesting information, it may be helpful possibly, but even if it's accurate, it doesn't give you the solution. Now, even worse than this, it gets gets more complicated again, or more, more confusing, um, because there's something called incidental findings. What these are, are findings that have no relevance to the pain. Now, you could think, well, if I've got pain, you scan the area of pain and you see something on the scan, that must be the reason you've got the problem. Well, this isn't necessarily the case. They've in fact done loads and loads and loads of studies on people with no pain, and they found huge levels of scan abnormalities. They found loads in the lower back, and I'll put these up here. They found loads in the knees, in the shoulders, in the hips of people. And again, I'll show you some examples of some of these here as well. So they're, they're quite rife in fact. And this means that when we think about pain, remembering pain is not always localized where you feel it from where it's actually coming from. A great example is someone could literally have shoulder or arm pain and they would presume the problem is in the shoulder or the arm. So the problem you then have is if you scan the shoulder, you are likely based on the incidental finding studies to find a problem in the shoulder. However, what happens if that's an incidental finding in the shoulder and the problem is not the shoulder, it's referred from the neck. That means that that person then goes and has physio on the shoulder, it doesn't work. They have in the injection in the shoulder, it doesn't work. They have surgery on the shoulder, it doesn't work. Where are they at? They're literally living with pain thinking, well, we've tried everything, obviously it's not gonna get better. When in fact, it could even be something completely different that the scan has misled them towards. So of course, this is something which you've got to be cautious with when you are a physio and making a diagnosis with regards to what the condition is. Because a scan, you think it's the solution, it could even mislead you. And I've seen this multiple times and there is also evidence on this too. So if, if you basically, well, a good example is a patient, well, several patients I've seen who've had the example I gave, which is shoulder pain, had shoulder surgery on the shoulder condition they saw on the scan, and then I treated the neck because they weren't getting better, and lo and behold, they got better with treating the neck. So the neck was the problem all along. You can see this with, you know, symptomatic crossover. A good example again is neck related to, um, you know, pins and needles and pain in the hand. Again, that can be from the hand, i.e. carpal tunnel syndrome or cubital tunnel syndrome in the elbow, but it could also be from the neck or even maybe the shoulder as well. And you can see it in the lower limb. So I've seen people who have pain in the sole of the foot and their initial instinct is, ah, oh, that must be plantar fasciitis as an example. And yet the underside of the foot is supplied by the S1 nerve root in the lumbar spine. So if there's a compression of that nerve, then it will mimic plantar fasciitis to, to a lesser or greater degree, sometimes exceptionally closely. And again, if we scan various areas of the body, we know that we find issues on these scans on normal people. So we've got to be very careful. So really you need to treat the individual, not the scan. You need to work out what's going on for yourself. And if it makes sense with the scan and they're responding, it makes sense then, doesn't it? If they're, if you're kind of like, ah, oh, this doesn't make sense to be that, but the scan says it is, and they're not getting any better on treating the condition the scan says it is, then you're probably barking up the wrong tree. So be cautious with scans. Another issue with scans, which is something which is very legitimate and people don't realize the effect of this, is that people can get very concerned with the, how they feel about you know, uh, certain medical language and, and certain terms. So of course, what's the scan gonna do? It's gonna give them a definitive term which is scary to some people. And that fear is gonna increase stress. And we know that stress affects healing and recovery and pain threshold and and what you do or don't do, the natural inclination is to 
not do anything, which makes most injuries worse. It seizes them up, you get weaker, you become less functional, and that's not gonna get you more functional and stronger and back to full action and full activity. So again, the fear factor of, oh my God, I've got you know an S1 nerve root compression and it's a moderate compression and it's you know causing all these symptoms sounds really bad. Or if someone says, oh my God, I've got you know spinal stenosis and it's compressing the nerve, the bones have grown around it and doctors start talking about, oh my God, these results are like, you know, you're 19 and you've got the, the back of an eight year old. It's totally unhelpful towards recovery. And without the scan, they would never have said that. So the scan in that case probably hindered the process of recovery. So next time you think about having a scan, it doesn't mean scans are always wrong, but be cautious on jumping into that too soon. You know, it may well be best to try and assess it, try some things out first. If it's working, what's the point in scanning it? It's getting better, it's getting better. And again, it doesn't tell you about the solution. So you've got to look for the solution, the causes of the problem. That's the priority. So, um, so yeah, so next time you think of having a scan, think twice about it.